I turn the, the phone off. Guys, you tell us when we are live, huh? it's two o'clock. Okay, you're live. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is your Sebastiano Toffoletti, European Digital SME Alliance. Welcome again to the series Digital SME Live. Uh, as you know, this is a series of uh, online episodes where we have a, a digital co a conversation with, uh, with experts and we try to bring you the hottest uh, topics uh, in terms of SMEs in the digital uh, space. Uh, uh, and uh, these this, this topics are discussed in, uh, in, in Europe. Let me ask my colleague Rosanna to mute herself, please. Thank you very much. So again, uh, welcome to, to this uh, Digital SME Live uh, event. Um, we'll be talking today about blockchain. Blockchain for SMEs, uh, so for small and medium-sized enterprises. Blockchain, is this uh, a hype or a real opportunity? Uh, we have all heard about uh, the blockchain in the last years, the big hype about um, cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin and so on. Uh, but uh, many are now saying, uh, have been saying uh, blockchain is uh, a technology which promises to do much more than that. It promises to bring uh, disruption to many other sectors, many other industries. It promises to enhance uh, transparency and traceability in transactions uh, uh, to ensure privacy by decentralizing uh, the storage of, of, of personal data. Um, it promises to be a very economic uh, technology to apply. Um, it, it, it does promise to essentially disrupt uh, many other sectors from uh, not just uh, the financial sector, but uh, you can talk about uh, the supply chain management, you can even talk about agriculture, you can talk about different sectors where this technology may have an impact. Uh, so we are today with uh, uh, four very important guests who are uh, in different ways experts and active in the, in the blockchain uh, discussions uh, uh, in Europe at different, at different levels. Uh, we have Petko Karamochev from uh, Bulgaria, Industri Industria is his company is based in Bulgaria, but he's, uh, I think he's working from London. We have a member of the European Parliament from Czech Republic, uh, Mikulas Peksa. Hello, Mikulas. Uh, Hello, we uh, thanks for invitation. Uh, we have uh, a gentleman from uh, the Netherlands, uh, Jérôme Perquin, uh, also CEO, founder of, 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 a start, of, a, of a company in blockchain, uh, to be smart. And then we have an Italian, uh, hello, Jerome, and then we have Enrico Talin from Italy. Uh, Enrico is CEO of Commercio, another, uh, another blockchain company uh, that was started uh, recently. Um, let me start very quickly with a, a, quote, a quote from uh, the European Commissioner for Innovation, Maria Gabriel, uh, when she spoke about blockchain, she said, I see blockchain as a game changer. Uh, and I want Europe to be at the, at the forefront of its development. We need to establish a right enabling environment, a digital single market for blockchain uh, so that all citizens can benefit uh, instead of a patchwork of initiatives. I think she was obviously referring to uh, the fragmentation that we have in Europe, uh, national initiatives, uh, laws, uh, European initiatives, and it's a bit, it's a bit difficult for, for, for our companies to compete mm -hmm. in this, in this European, uh, European market. Uh, let me go directly to the topic. Um, because blockchain is a buzzword, um, we have we know we 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 we're talking about uh, cryptocurrencies very often, but blockchain is much more than that. So uh, let me ask uh, our guest uh, Petko Petko Karamochev, uh, what is in your opinion blockchain? How would you define that uh, as a business? Uh, 
as a business person, how do you, uh, when you have to explain what blockchain is, what do you say to people? Thank you. Thank you, Sebastiano, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, and also, we are very happy to have uh, uh, Maria Gabriel as um, our commissioner. Uh, in, in a simple terms, the, the blockchain is, um, is, a, is a database, but a very different database. So it's shared across a network of computers instead of standing on a single computer. So once the record, normally once the record has been added uh, to this chain of records, it's very difficult or impossible to change. Uh, this means that uh, in order for, for the um, uh, copies of the database to be the same, uh, the networks, the network is making constant checks. And uh, what does it mean in, in kind of a, a very normal, plain uh, business um, uh, language? It means that uh, you can basically share facts on this network and these facts, they remain secured on, uh, on, on the network. And therefore, it can actually uh, create contracts. And in a very simple terms, again, this is where the term smart contract is coined. By holding the smart contracts on, the, uh, on, on, uh, on, such, a, on such a network, uh, you can actually and technically replace all of the paperwork or all the uh, manual stuff that we did um, in the past. Probably uh, it, will be, uh, it will be pretty easy if, uh, if, I, if I try to explain this as, as, type of, as type of network. So different computers by uh, holding uh, different information uh, are, are, are actually able to, as I, you can consider it as a, as a non-stop everlasting database of records that cannot be manipulated manually by IT people, by administrators, by hackers, etc. which means that whatever we agree on this network, it should technically stay there uh, forever. This has a, a very big applications in many, many different use cases that I'm quite sure we'll be able to discuss. Petco, without being too technical, when you say nobody can modify the, the record in the database, can you, you know, very shortly, without being too technical, explain why uh, nobody, a hacker or somebody, can go into these records and modify the records? Well, because it's a, because it's a network created of computers and we, uh, men create computers, it doesn't mean that it cannot be changed, but it's made so difficult to be changed that uh, that it's technically uh, unchangeable. And it's because it's based on uh, a very complicated cryptography, and uh, 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 which is invented originally with the Bitcoin. It, it's probably not originally invented, but the Bitcoin brought it to the uh, uh, to the vision of the rest of the world. But yeah, based on the based on the Bitcoin and the way it was designed, we learned a lot of a lot of stuff of how we can create and sort of extend this network uh, to offer many more services, not just cryptocurrencies. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, let me go to, uh, to Mikola Spexa, uh, who's, who's member of the European Parliament uh, from, you know, from the Czech Republic. Uh, Miklas, uh, what do you think in terms of uh, adoption of blockchain by European small and medium-sized enterprises? What is that this technology can bring to, to SMEs in, in your opinion? And where are we in terms of adoption? Well, I would say a lot. Like uh, when we are talking about in terms of adoption, uh, we actually came to the point when uh, politicians become interested in the blockchain. However, there is no like clear decision uh, what shall happen. We are just like testing what are the opportunities. I think uh, the, the whole story kind of like started in the end of the previous election term in October 2018. The European Parliament adopted a motion for resolution uh, with nice name like distributed ledger technologies and blockchain building trust with this intermediation, which is basically the uh, the reason or the, the, this is this was the impulse for further uh, like development. That's why kind of like commission started to be interested in. The same year they uh, set up this blockchain observatory and forum. And uh, now uh, through the uh, whole Horizon 2020, there was like already like 200 million euro invested in. However, uh, clearly in this election term uh, since 2019, 
there will be a lot of uh, new things that can be implemented. We really need to find a way how to support small and medium enterprises to get into. I think uh, we should discuss about like how to get funding to that companies in Europe uh, who would like to compete in that field uh, to really go in various applications. At that point, I would tend to be kind of like liberal rather than just like predefining what this or that company should do. Uh, I think in general, we need a framework for uh, really like utilizing uh, blockchain. And I think uh, as you previously mentioned, it can be applied in supply chains, agriculture, uh, building trust for uh, various financial services and so on. So uh, let's get surprised what the people, what the creative people will get out of it. Yeah, maybe, yes, thank you very much, Nicholas. Maybe I, I will go with that specific question uh, to, to Enrico Tallin from, from Italian company, CEO of, of Commercio. Uh, basically, in which, in which sectors do you think a blockchain can be, can be applied? In all sectors? Or do you have any preferred sectors where do you think this will be, uh, this has great applications? Well, as a matter of fact, every, everywhere there is a value to be shared. Uh, there, there's a, a possibility, there's a target, okay? Just to put this into perspective, if we need to put uh, the blockchain phenomenon in a kind of like time perspective, um, this is like one every decade kind of invention. You know, we go like the, in the 90s, we got the internet, and then we go like mobile, we go like this technology that usually comes along once in a decade. Okay, so every 10 years. The blockchain, as a matter of fact, is probably is going to be the, I, from, from what I think, it's going to be the next 10 years um, uh, technology. Why? Because uh, it kind of like really uh, brings the same uh, power that the internet did for information. Okay, mm -hmm. so like uh, internet was great for sharing have a lot of information there's a lot of people sharing a lot of pictures of cats uh, on facebook and any anything they can do you can do it with you can like book a, a hotel you can do as many many things with the internet the only thing you cannot do with the internet is not like the, the best thing to do is to share value so if i need to send you for example 100 euro sebastiano for you, it's not the same if I take just a picture of 100 euro and I send you a WhatsApp <laughs> image. You want to, you, you really would like me to give it to you this 100 euro. So in order to make, uh, to bring value, it means that I need not to have it anymore. Okay, so I, need, right. I cannot just send you a picture and say, okay, we're even, we're square. We're not. You need because to have if, I, if I have 100, you have minus 100, right? Exactly, so that's the point. Somebody needs to make the balance. Yeah, it has, it has to be kind of like a ledger. And here we, we kind of like get into the, the mindset of the blockchain. It means that if I have something and then once I give it to you, it means that I have to deduct it from my account and give it to you. That's what's the blockchain. It's the sharing of the value. So the technology that allows to do that in a way that it's kind of like shared among all the people because this has been done Everything, all the money is, is basically is digital, apart from few cash. Everything else, when I send you a wire transfer on, on the bank, it's digital money, okay? So it's a database where like in my account gets minus 100 and your account gets plus 100. The blockchain does that without the bank, without, without <laughs> anybody, because everybody can just download a piece of software and they can share things in a this can share value in this way. So to answer the question, sorry about this like little. Uh, oh, it's very, it was, it was very interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to example. really understand that the, 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 the target is value sharing. Now, in terms of, of what, what the verticals, what are the actually target? I think that digital transformation is the key because uh, the uh, blockchain will be the main, the Big, one of the biggest technology enable, enabler for digital transformation. And digital transformation doesn't mean I download uh, Skype, I download Zoom. Or, it means, okay, I really change the process, the business process, and I become a really, truly digital company. That's uh, the biggest opportunity that lies in the next 10 years. So the blockchain will be 
the poster of digital transformation. That's my idea. Uh, that's interesting. So you want, you think we a space through the blockchain. Uh, Jerome, uh, you're also, Jerome Perkin, also um, uh, founder and CFO of, of a startup of, of a blockchain company, uh, to be smart uh, you. Uh, what is your take on that? Uh, where do you think blockchain can really give, be a game changer for, for the different sectors, for the different industries? Well, I think, I think there's a lot of opportunities. If you, for me, if you would summarize what, let's say the value is of blockchain for companies or for complete sectors, for me, it's really about simplification simplification of processes and taking waste out of processes uh, and uh, reducing complexity um, i think because we're talking about adoption of blockchain and and getting smes into the area of blockchain i think we need to prove and show to smes that with this technology they can decrease complexity and they can take out waste and in then the question is you know what type of processes what type of sectors this technology would best work and I think a number of things were said already, but sectors with multiple players in the value chain. Uh, everybody knows by now a blockchain for your own company. Don't even think about it. Uh, it's always about multiple companies. That's where the value comes in. Uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, get advantage from sharing data. So you, you need to think about processes and sectors where sharing of data uh, will actually help everybody in the chain to do their piece of the process better. Uh, so I need data that you have at a certain point. Can we please share it? Yeah. Then very important is that in sectors where there are certain trust issues, uh, where you have different parties, where the interests are not necessarily completely aligned uh, because they come from a different perspective, they have different interests. There, let's say you can think about uh, blockchain. And I think the last point is yeah, everywhere where you have value transfers where you have financial settlements mm -hmm. that's i think where uh let's say blockchain comes in because it's so very good at um uh, transferring value yeah that's that's where it's really good at yeah? and then yeah the sectors that my company focuses on is for instance the logistics sector the supply chain sector that's quite obvious there's many companies that focus on that uh, but also for instance the facility management in buildings Mm -hmm. And that's because also there you have uh, a lot of parties involved. You have a lot of data to be shared. You have sort of trust issues, you know, interests are not freely aligned. Mm -hmm. And every, every uh, company in that sector would really benefit from a very secure way and of, share, of sharing data. Uh, Jerome, what you are saying reminds me of the fact that maybe blockchain tries basically to replace the role of intermediaries. Like this sure. can be the banks, so this can be the agencies, even the notaries, you know, the transac financial transactions. Uh, so, so what do you think? Uh, do you think there's going to be a future for these intermediaries or blockchain is going to wipe them up top of the, of the scene? There will be a future, but, but the role will change. Eh? So I think a lot of the intermediaries, they have a role to play in our society. They are there for a reason. Uh, but the downside of it is that we have so many, let's say, institu institutions, we have so many controls and compliance rules, et cetera, et cetera. That, yeah, our world has become a little bit complex. Yeah, it's it's a bit, of, and for many companies, it has become very complex, and that's why I I stress so much uh, reducing complexity. Yeah, so uh, taking out the intermediaries for me personally is not an objective in itself, but for me the objective is let's please see where for companies or for sectors we can reduce the complexity that they need to deal with, and this is the technology that can actually that can actually do that for yeah. them. That's really and also, uh, uh, thank you. And also, perhaps it's a matter of um, enabling the real competition, no? Because when you have, uh, when you reduce a little bit the complexity in the market, mm -hmm. you you make sure that the real competition takes place where the best products with the, at the best price uh, win, right? So we are also thinking about a way to um, reshuffle the economy, the, econ the rules of the economy, right? Uh, is yeah, this also a, a, an option? Yeah. Absolutely, and and you could you could look at blockchain, and I wouldn't say it's a commodity because I think you can make an uh, a competitive advantage with it for sure. But at the end of the day, I think it also works best in these processes that are sort of hygiene factors, yeah, where you where you not necessarily uh, want to compete with other companies. Actually, areas where you want to cooperate with companies in your value chain, 
Uh, that's where it where it works best. You say, okay, we all benefit from sharing this data, etc. And by arranging that in a very simple way and arranging that part, we can actually focus on other things that we do want to compete on on our our marketing or our products or on other aspects, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a clear. But but the point is is that particular for SMEs, you know, uh, with all respect, blockchain and particular also smart contracts is not an easy concept to quickly understand uh, because it's so different in the way of thinking. And therefore our company, we very much focus on that adoption of uh, blockchain and smart contracts by really trying to explain very, very well what this technology can do uh, and really focus at the decision makers uh, and showing the advantages. And that, that's quite a, cha quite a challenging task. Yeah, uh, I wanna I wanna definitely go into smart contracts later because I think it's a very interesting concept. And many people are asking me, can we do smart contracts for this or the other sectors? What does this mean in practice? But maybe before we do that, uh, let me go back to to Petco because Petco Caramocha because you you are you know you are a, an expert in blockchain. You have had many projects in uh, implementing blockchain technologies in other companies. Uh, what do you think nowadays are the biggest barriers in in SMEs? To adopt uh, to adopt blockchain uh, in, in the different sectors, uh, we we cannot automatically speak about adoption. I mean, there are different there are many different stages in between the idea of adopting something and actually adopting it. And uh, like, I mean, the blockchain is very similar to the internet, so there are so many different use cases. And uh, I I would like to thank the colleagues about mentioning uh, trust. And and uh, and fact sharing. So basically, a blockchain network is about fact sharing. So what you need to do is to build a network. It's like you need to have different players in it. It might be a bank. It might be a trade finance uh, 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 process. It might be a supply chain or something else. You might have different um, uh, different players on this on the on, on the same network. And what you're doing is. You can transfer not only money, but you can transfer a lot of different facts. So it's it's very much like a, a single source source of truth. But here comes the interesting part, and this might take us uh, many different discussions. Right now, if you want to build something on the internet and put it, you basically create a big tech company. One sooner or later, you become a big tech. So if you are a big CRM provider, without naming anyone in particular, <laughs> want to have many different clients on it, you basically build a database. You say. I will build a database, jump on it, come everybody on this database. It might be really a Facebook, it might be a Google. You might even give it for free of charge and say, guys, here's my database. One day, these users, they understand that the data doesn't actually belong to them. Yeah, It belongs to the network, uh, sorry, to the database. So uh, uh, not, not just to me, but to many other practitioners in the area, a kind of a, the blockchain concept is about returning data to where it belongs. So it belongs yeah. to me. Yes, it might be in the cloud. Yes, it might be somewhere else on my server or on somebody else's server. I don't care about it, but it's mine. And this intermediary you tackled uh, is a completely different sort of intermediary. It's about me being able to trade with somebody else without the need of a centralized database run by somebody else. That's the beauty of it. That's the idea. And because of the way the system is designed, we, we should we probably with the other trade party we should probably be distrustful in a way because we are competing we might be trading agents we might be something else but the network will make us a, a sort of exchange data it might be contracts it might be automated uh, facts it might be something else it might be even money it might be digital money like digital euro tomorrow uh, but uh, but uh, uh, but we will trust the network without somebody in the middle who will say oh, one day I'll, I'll become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. So to thank, me, thank you. Thank you from, from the big yeah. tech. I think you gave a very powerful example. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll switch to, 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 to Mikolas uh, as a member of the European Parliament, because what you said, Petco, is very interesting in the fact that uh, data, uh, block, thanks to blockchain, data goes back to the people who own the data, who generate the data, no? uh, instead of uh, data becoming essentially an asset of the database, of the, of, the, of the technology company that uses that data, be it is Facebook, Google, or whatever. Um, so maybe is the blockchain really the technology that can allow Europe to uh, 
do the dream that we had a few years ago with the GDPR, uh, Nicolas, with the General Data Protection Regulation, where Europe really wanted to give uh, the control of the data back to the people. Uh, is this what blockchain can do for us? In certain way, yes, but uh, I would definitely uh, underscore what you have previously mentioned about the intermediaries, because this is a big issue. Uh, yeah, it is sort of like reshuffling our economy, but of course those who have now strong position, like the previously mentioned big companies, they are not quite happy about this this uh, ongoing opportunity, and we will need to find find a way for them in in a way. Like we have seen something uh, similar when discussing the shared services. Like there was, for example, Uber, and any time Uber came to another city, the local taxi driver they were like opposing the idea of uh, having such a new competitor. And uh, I'm afraid that we will see something similar. Uh, in uh, discussion with the blockchain. However, the blockchain is even more affecting some uh, quite like vital sectors. When we are talking about the financial services, for example, the banks will probably not be happy about the existence of something like Bitcoins. But there is a, another problem because the governments it actually will not be really happy about it as uh, the current bank sector is being quite like regulated, pro uh, providing various options to, let's say, uh, see whether there, uh, there are criminals misusing the money and so on. However, this has no clear direct equivalent for the economy of, of block, uh, blockchain or for cryptocurrencies. And that point, some people are really being scared and we will need to kind of like find a way how to utilize the new technology without really like, uh, or like to, to really include this resistance or like uh, deal with it so that uh, people can, can really easily accept it. And I, I think this, this, this will be a quite important political questions for the upcoming years, because uh, would we not succeed in that task? Uh, we cannot really uh, boost too much uh, in the direction of implementing blockchain in, into our sectors. Yeah, I, I see Enrico Tallinn from uh, the CEO of, of Commercio. Uh, you're, you're nodding. Enrico, would you like to comment on what uh, Nicolas has said? Yeah, I, I think that uh, all the previous uh, points are, are, are valid. Now, there, we have an opportunity with the blockchain technology because uh, everything boils down to one thing at the beginning. So it's our identity. So there is one technology which is really becoming really interesting. It's, it's not like directed, uh, directly linked to, to the blockchain, but it's very close because the, it works very, could work very well on the blockchain, which is uh, the concept of self-sovereign identity. And basically it uh, solves everything you guys just talked about before, because we, we are like, you know, identity, digital identity has always been like the beginning, the first generation, each site, you have to go and log in, register every time. Okay. So this was like the first generation. On the second generation, basically, they said, no, no, you don't have to do that. Just like use Google, use Facebook, mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then you're fine. Yeah. But of course, we're not. You're not. Fine. You're not fine. <laughs> now, when, when something is like completely free, it's always kind of like mm, man, if it's free, means that you are the product. By the way, you are the yes. <laughs> if you if it's free, you are the product. So the second generation was like you. You just use Google. You use uh, uh, Facebook to log in. The third generation, the self sovereign identity, it's fantastic, and it's the cornerstone of our. A commercial network technology. Why? Because basically it lets you, the sovereign identity lets you create your own uh, envelope where it's yours. So it's only you, you, it's not something that they give it to you and they can always take it away. It's like they cannot cancel the, your Facebook account because you own the, the, the digital identity. And so it's called like a sovereign identity. There's an implementation by uh, WC3 which is like a DID. We, we were the first blockchain in Europe to develop uh, the standard, the ID standard. So is, we're very like passionate about this. And you know, the cornerstone of the, everything starts from an identity. So, you know, I think that uh, yeah, the Euro, Europe, uh, the European Union should like, start focusing 
on the on the single self sovereign identity okay and then there are like two other things that for me it's a very 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 important because once you have the identity the second part is the signature so the e signatures the way that you can sign a, a document and the third pillar i think is the e delivery so the fact that i send a document to you and then you i cannot say no sorry i didn't say that went to the spam folder okay yeah. as many times it happens okay no with the blockchain you cannot say ah sorry went to the spam folder no because you have like a e delivery so in for example our company build the this technology to provide these three pillars in a very very simple way because we of course the technology the back the blockchain is a very it's an enabling technology but the gap is bigger because we need to have the digital companies to bring this enabling technology to the end user it's very difficult for end mm -hmm. user to, to just directly approach the the, the blockchain uh, thank you Enrico. with that uh, i will go back to jerome because you are basically Enrico, you have introduced elements uh, uh, that in my opinion lead also to the concept of the, the smart contract which which was mentioned earlier and since we get many questions from from companies in, in various sectors uh they say maybe they they already start thinking they could use uh, blockchain to enable smart contracts uh, in their sectors. So do, do you have a, a, a um, can you explain what this means, Jerome, and w what should a company do if they want to apply smart contract, blockchain smart contract to their sector? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, by the way, I would like to come back later to uh, some of the remarks from Nicolas about the uh, adoption and the resistance. But on, yeah, on your question, so what we're doing, for instance, as an example, is if you look in the logistics sector, uh, what you can do, for example, with smart contracts is that when you have to manage a certain transport, a certain supply chain, and uh, let's say you want to uh, financially settle with the different parties uh, in that supply chain based on, let's say, the conditions of the transport. So was the transport on time? Was it well delivered, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what you have agreed as a service uh, was is it delivered and if it's mm -hmm. so then I immediately I, I immediately want to want to settle that now, these kind of things you could let's say program into a smart contract can sort of put your yeah we sometimes call it your service level agreement and it's just one example your service level agreement program mm -hmm. all these conditions into the smart contract now the difference between let's say normal computing and, and smart contracts would then be that you will put that smart contract on the blockchain immutable nobody can change it you can also put a certain value or you probably will put a certain value with it a conditional value so you know the value will be there so there's no tempering there's no trust anymore you know for sure that once that truck arrives you will get your money and it will be paid if it if it meets the conditions uh, that you have agreed up front right so that very much simplifies the um, whole administrative process and it yeah takes a while uh, takes out any potential discussion you may have etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, yeah. there are many more other use cases for smart contracts or any anything where you are where you're thinking about let's say conditional transport of value so i will do this if this happens i will do this uh, so conditional the con value the, the conditionality you also said you wanted to comment on on the uh, miklas um uh, remarks uh, well uh, interesting yeah yeah well, it was an interesting discussion, I think, uh, and the comparison with Uber, et cetera, because, I mean, you're you're absolutely right that, let's say, many current business models, particularly the large companies, but many companies are based on ownership of data. Yeah, that's that's what makes value, and I think that will only become more and more important as the society starts to generate more and more data with all the new technology and IoT, so we will only get more data. And if you combine that data with artificial intelligence and other technology, it becomes even more valuable and more powerful. And of course, that's sort of um, yeah, a problem and an opportunity at the same time, because you could see it as a problem. You say, who owns the data, big companies? Do I want this as a, as a society? But it's also really an opportunity. And that's where blockchain comes in, because if we would be able to make that step to maybe a bit different business models and more sharing of data we can 
do so much more better things with these data as a society if we are willing to share it and do it in a different way. But we need to reinvent some of the business models. And of course, and that's a challenge if you go to companies today and you they start to realize that maybe they need to give up some of their ownership or data, some of their role in a process, immediately, you know, some decision makers will step back from it. And and that's part of the challenge that we need to overcome. Um, really, and that's that's one of the things that that my company focuses on. So yeah, I see the challenge, uh, but I I personally believe in the bigger value for the whole society if we can overcome that because I think yeah. it's there. Yeah, yeah. Mik Mikolas, how, how do we convince the companies and the people to to live in this uh, shared uh, environment where they can actually uh, decide to work together rather than and share the data instead of competing among among each others? Well, this is always really hard and like I would have a comment to, to this whole discussion in previous. I think we are quite like abstract comparing from what the, uh, what the common people expect from us. We really need concrete examples how to contribute to their, uh, to, to each uh, one personal uh, life. What can, what can it really change? Because uh, otherwise I, I think the people can easily take just some like very general impression uh, of something that could be even scaring for them. Like you probably know uh, the, the whole story of a copyright, like last, I think more than 15 years, we are trying to convince people that actually we have quite like uh, different uh, business models like open source, free culture and so on, uh, which can be used instead of, uh, instead of copyright. Still, there is a cert, uh, cert, uh, simple significant part of the society promoting it as uh, and the intellectual property as sort of like the only way how to move forward uh, with technological progress which is actually not true because the most of the progress is being based on like sharing the wisdom sharing the code and so on so exactly this 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 type of uh, problems we can face uh, when speaking about the blockchain I'm happy that no one in the uh, in the context of uh, smart contracts mentioned notaries, because imagine I would be a notary, I would be quite scared of something like that is being developed because I would be afraid of my job, really. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the, the people will probably be not happy. And later on, when it, it was, we were probably here to quite similar discussion like we have had with copyright holders about like the notaries are absolutely necessary and the blockchain is the evil but it's not the case like we really need to develop the, the, the opportunity because, because would we take the backwards approach we would still use steam engines and that's not really a solution right uh, let me move a little bit on now with the discussion because uh, earlier on uh, nicholas from the european parliament also you mentioned uh, uh, that uh, the EU has already invested uh, around 200 million uh, euros in uh, the Horizon programs to make sure uh, SMEs will adopt the blockchain technology and so on. Um, we have a project funded by the EU which is called Block IS, which is now up and running and we are a part of that project and the project has an envelope of 2.8 million euros to, to basically uh, support and finance directly uh, companies that implement uh, innovative blockchain projects. Uh, and we have, uh, you know, two of the speakers today, uh, have uh, their companies have been uh, awarded uh, by the Block IS project. And I'm talking about uh, uh, Joran Perkin, Perkin and Enrico Tallinn. So maybe Joran and, per and, um, and Enrico, you would like to say something about this uh, Block IS project, the, the experience you had with this, uh, uh, if, if this um, initiative was for you helpful in, uh, in moving ahead with the, 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 the implementation of blockchain. Absolutely, absolutely. So as I said, I think we, we develop a, uh, let's say a workshop product for education and awareness around blockchain. So we try, we, we aim to get people over that hurdle of adoption. Uh, I mean, for us, it was quite simple. We had developed the first version basically with our own funding. And Block AS has now provided us to uh, with the funding for the second phase of that, and we're very happy with that. And but apart from the funding, it's also the network. Uh, we we our aim is to uh, bring our product into Europe, and with Block AS and with the network, we um, we uh, we get more traction on that. So yeah, for sure, it was really helpful. 
or is yeah. really helpful because we're in the middle of yeah. the program. So you are still in the middle of the program, you are meeting other companies, you're creating networks, etc. What, what was yeah. your experience, Enrico, instead with this Block IS uh, um, uh, network and, and event and, and, and funding? Yeah, very similar actually experience uh, with uh, Jerome. Um, basically, we, we self-funded and we created the first three pillars. I told you about the identity, the signature, and the e-delivery exchange of documents. So commercial was like, a, that. it's the documents blockchain. So a blockchain, instead of exchanging bitcoins uh, or like uh, we're exchanging business documents. So um, we did that with our own funding. And then we discover, um, <laughs> thanks to Digital As Me, um, uh, the Block uh, IS uh, uh, project. And was really, it's really, it's been like a fantastic experience for two reasons. First of all, because uh, um, it's, the, the funding is a part of it, but it's not the most important part. Yeah, this is interesting Number, what you're saying, that the funding is not the only reason why uh, companies engage in this initiative. This is very interesting for me. Yeah, I think that the number one part, uh, the, the, the number one, uh, um, the number one uh, uh, benefit that we got from it, it's basically that uh, by forcing us to apply to a specific, like, uh, there's, a pro there's a process to apply for Block IS, and you need to explain things in, a in some different ways. Yes, so this, yeah, the, the process of applying kind of like really give us more clarity on what we were like doing it. So it was really, really helpful for that. That's the number one. So the, it kind of like force you to develop uh, business models, a uh, way to like really address all the little different yeah, parts. You, you have thing. to ask yourself the right questions in order to, to, to make a business that makes sense. Uh, so to exactly. Say. And so if you want to make the cut, you have to like, uh, you, it has to make business sense. And if it makes business sense, get, you get ahead on the program. And it's like a mutual benefit uh, uh, thing, the number one. The second one is networking. I mean, this is like one on, on a life opportunity. I met, we met like so many interesting people, people that really from different backgrounds and everybody kind of like with the same idea that they wanted to use, they want to innovate. So, you know, it's like being a part of a great club with people that really wants to advance technology, that wants to use the, uh, the, the cutting edge technology, but not like, you know the crypto people. I I I was part of it because I started uh, I I started working with blockchain since 2009. Okay, I I used to mine bitcoins with my CPU. That's how blockchain old I am. Okay, and of course I follow all the Ethereum uh, all the Ethereum uh, kind of like era. I was like probably one of the first people that uh, uh, talk about Ethereum in Italy and did a video very long, and I was in the pre-sale. But, you know, everything, all the, the crypto blockchain movement, it's very interesting, but they lack one thing, <laughs> okay? They need to build something for companies. That's the only thing that I was missing from that fantastic group of people, visionaries, amazing people, the best people you can find, but the only thing that's missing is like doing something for like, actually, can make the difference in terms of business. So, you know, in this community, we found that. People exactly uh, like Petco, like uh, Jerome, that really think about how can we change the way that business do business with the blockchain. That's the, the kind of people that, that's the bunch of people I met in this program. There was like, Invaluable. Yeah, well, very good. Let me let me just say that uh, this Block IS project is is still going on, and there is another call. Uh, they are looking for for companies to apply, and as you said, they don't just get the funding, but they also get the business support. They, they get the network. They get the ideas, and so you know, it's it's just an opportunity, one of the many that that, that is now available, and it is available because you know this money is made is in the in the horizon 2020 uh, program and so it is there for for the companies <clears throat> let me remind everyone that we are live on um, uh, youtube uh, facebook and, and twitter uh, and then we have an audience up there and, and let me see also because we we may have some questions uh, 
from uh, people who are following us. Uh, let me ask uh, this question to, to one of the speakers there. Uh, a question asked by, by Serge. He's saying blockchain is also, uh, could also be useful to keep uh, all logs uh, for the activity on uh, computers in, in SMEs. I think he's, he's thinking about uh, um, making blockchain uh, for, for cybersecurity to educate people and to control what people are doing, etc. Uh, does this make any sense to, to any of you experts? Maybe Petco, you're not, maybe you, you think this, is, this might be an idea. Yeah, because we are, um, we, uh, there's no commercial interest in uh, what I'm saying, uh, and, it, and it's not our project. Um, uh, one of my, um, it's like uh, one of my friends, uh, uh, somebody I know, is after uh, the project is called Lock Sentinel. So it's about uh, inputting all the uh, all the journals of uh, different business activity and uh, uh, server and individual hardware and uh, software activity on a, on a on a blockchain. So this might be a really useful project because um, uh, uh, it uh, it kind of provides a. Uh, an ultimate source of truth of what actually had happened with uh, with um, within a network or within a, within a, 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 a particular software. Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, read, read the if, if unless anyone wants to reply, uh, I read out another question we got from 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 Justina on um, on on Facebook. She's asking um, how do we support ICT companies, uh, digital SMEs, like in particular, I think, in bringing blockchain to the users, so to other industries? Um, I don't know who of you may want to answer this. Maybe Nicolas, uh, you, you, do you have an idea? Do you think this could be a strategy for for the Europe for for yourself in the, in the European Parliament or for the European institutions to promote blockchain uh, by helping the companies that bring blockchain to, to the other to the other SMEs. Well, first of all, I'm really happy for Enrico's uh, Enrico's previous speech because I'm happy that actually there is a people there are people from from the business who appreciate the support of uh, of the EU funding because usually we are being criticized for doing that. Uh, however, like there are various options like uh, the, there is a quite common way how to support startups, for example, uh, that uh, sort of like you get part of the funding from the state and part of the uh, part from the private investor. So this is the way how to ensure that the state will sort of like invest uh, in, in a smart way rather than just like uh, trying to link money to uh, someone's pocket, uh, let it be installed. So uh, there are definite, definitely ways and uh, the commission and the EU has quite like broad programs to support uh, uh, SMEs. So uh, I think this is kind of like the platform we should build on. If it works and there are real people who are like appreciating it's working, I would just like reiterate the, ex the existing process rather than reinventing the new one unless there is a request for that. I think this is also a good idea because sometimes we always think about new things but we need to, you know, find out what are the success stories and then a repeat, scale up, replicate rather than, you know, every time uh, spending money, uh, paying uh, consultants to invent something new that maybe already exists. Uh, Petko, you also wanted to say yeah, something. Yeah, you know, I, I just wanted to add something interesting. Uh, so, uh, there's a uh, uh, just a it's like uh, to put it in short, uh, blockchain could be the operating, the network operating system of Europe. And there's a running project which is called European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, uh, which is currently uh, in, in its early stages, but it's uh, quickly moving. Uh, so there are currently four use cases developed. This means that we are going to have um, a kind of a, a common platform for all of the EU states to communicate on. Uh, so it's notarization. It's diplomas, it's the second use case, it's a European self-sovereign identity and are creating a, a trusted data sharing. But I also wanted to add uh, that on Monday, uh, uh, the European uh, states, the member states voted uh, three more use cases. One is for a use case for asylum application. The second could be really interesting for the SMEs, which is uh, about debt and uh, equity financing. So that we could turn this infrastructure into debt and equity finance uh, financing solution, and uh, the last one is about European social uh, security number uh, for a common uh, European social security number. So uh, this is an ongoing project, and it's uh, going out from its infancy into uh, into an experimental uh, experimental stage. And uh, 
probably next year we're going to see some uh, some of the production use cases and SMEs will be able to develop applications on the European um, uh, uh, blockchain service infrastructure in a similar way companies are delivering apps for the Apple's App Store or for the Android uh, Android Store. This is phenomenal. I think this would be really cool in Europe. Yeah. Sounds yeah. sounds really very very ambitious. Um, Mikolas, are you aware of these initiatives, or uh, do you have other things in mind for the next uh, for, for the for the for this mandate of the European Parliament? What are your plans uh, for 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 blockchain in 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 the, in the next years? Well, this is the weird uh, story about how the EU works that actually every single initiative in terms of like the legal initiative has to start from the commission and the parliament is not allowed us to start it. So we are currently like waiting like uh, what what will they provide us uh, and it's uh, yeah, well, uh, very much up to them. Uh, what is currently like being discussed? There was there was uh, uh, a public consultation by the Commission uh, about the cryptocurrencies a few months ago. So uh, I think we will see a uh, sort of like a regulation that will kind of like. Uh, change the way or like adapt the way how they are currently being regulated and uh, well uh, without uh, seeing it it is hard to say what will be the exact uh, exact changes but mm -hmm. uh, I, I would uh, i would love to have the opportunity to use the cryptocurrencies much more in uh, let's say normal business rather than just uh, as a tool for for uh, let's say uh, those who are interested in yeah Okay, good. Thank you very much. Look, uh, we are getting towards the end of, of this episode uh, of uh, Digital SME Live. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll go back to, to, to Enrico and ask if you have any, any, any take on the discussion we had until now, like a kind of last statement from, from you on, on, on our conversation of today. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the, the last take is that uh, I think that everybody that listened to this uh, to this uh, webinar to this uh, conversation should really uh, like look into it into the blockchain and try to really uh, find out because there's a, a huge opportunity so it's a hype of an opportunity the, my last uh, my last statement is uh, opportunity opportunity definitely because uh, this is like the same opportunity that was like in, in the, the in the late 90s and the early 2000s for the internet and you know guys that at the time the biggest fortunes like Facebook and Google were born okay now it's gonna be different than with the blockchain so but still everybody has like more democratic there's more pieces of the there's not like one one blockchain wins it all because it's going to be like an interconnection of different, uh, basically, blockchains. But uh, the, my take is, uh, please, everybody that listens to this, uh, uh, to this webinar, uh, try to learn more about the blockchain and try to understand how this, this technology can like, benefit. And that would be like the same kind of tip I would give to people in the 90s. You know, take a look at the internet because it might change something, and it did. And this is the same thing I'm saying now. Take a look at the blockchain because it might be changed something. Very good. Jerome, so bidding on what Enrico said, you think this is not going to be a, a, a bubble like the, the, the dot-com in the 2000s. The blockchain is now the new hype, but it is also an opportunity, as Enrico says, but you think this is going to work. It's not going to be just a bubble. Absolutely. I think it was a hype. Not anymore. It was a hype, and it is an opportunity. Yeah, I think I think the hype is gone. I think we've learned a lot from that. I think the hype had upsides and downsides, but I would say let's forget about that. That was the last couple of years. At the moment, it's it's it's. I wouldn't say business as usual, but it's just one of these many great new technologies that we have, and that we, uh, if we look into it, we uh, and like Enrico said, if you start to look into it and and start to understand it and learn it, you think, wow, this is, this this could be really something. Where it, We'll go to in five years or so. Really, really difficult to say. I mean, uh, who, who knew in the 90s that Facebook would be as big as it is today? I mean, you just don't know. But do not take the risk to sort of miss out on the opportunity. Not as an individual, uh, but also not as a as a business, uh, because you 
you may regret it, you may miss opportunities, uh, maybe not. Uh, the last thing I also want to say on that, uh, when you talk about adoption and 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 also with with Mikolas, I mean, there's there's also the consumer, eh? there's also the user. And when we were talking about uh, uh, one of the aspects of blockchain, like data ownership and how important that is, uh, I also strongly believe that um, that that the, the 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 power of the consumer, what they eventually want, for example, with their data, could be let's say a driving force uh, or a driving behind blockchain. Because if they and and I think you see signs of that, wake up and say, you know, the current business model with data, for example doesn't really work for me anymore uh, uh, I, I don't i don't like it anymore and then there are opportunities for that and we make it user friendly and say this works as well and blah 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 maybe maybe we need to involve the consumer much more right and and really explain to them as well um so there's uh, many opportunities but do not miss out on it look into it absolutely yeah. All right. Uh, I think with that, uh, I think we, we will conclude uh, today's uh, episode of uh, Digital SME Live uh, Blockchain for SME. So hype of opportunity, definitely an opportunity. Uh, there are many, many, many takeaways from uh, from uh, the speakers uh, that we have today. I'm sure our audience uh, uh, will have taken due notes and uh, uh, feel free to get in touch with us to, to, uh, through the social media the, or email us directly if you have questions. Uh, stay also tuned because next Friday we are going to have another episode. Uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, apps for COVID, for, for, uh, for um, contact tracing. And this is a very, very current topic of discussion. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for having you today. Um, I'm Sebastiano Tofaletti. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.